even the idea of adding St Albie into Moona felt like it moved the um, flannelette curtain, you know, another kilometre down the road and then that mm. added, like, prices in um, Moona seemed to skyrocket once. Everyone was like, oh, Moona's actually a bloody nice suburb. Well, and then if you go from, oh, well, Moona, yeah, that's a nice suburb, but have you been to the heart of Glenorchy? Yeah. That's a bloody nice suburb. Going one, going twice, no. All right, guys, welcome back to The Property Pod, your weekly engagement into real estate here in the Hobart Marketplace. I'm your host, Aaron Horn, and it gives me great pleasure to be back at the desk with my two real estate agent friends, John McGregor and Patrick Berry. Welcome back, team. Hey, it's good to be back. <laughs> it literally feels like we never left this place. Yeah, yeah. Like it's been so fast this week. <laughs> you know the best that is? I know. It's, uh, <laughs> So I had this big plan where we were going to um, bank a few episodes prior to Easter and, um, yeah, John decided wait, wait, wait. to show up as, <laughs> as cool, hip builder, John. <laughs> hey, I'm still renovating. I'm still renovating. Hey, it's been 12 yeah. months. Oh, I could have worn this every week if it makes sense. <laughs> Oh, it's good. I thought we could do like a little seat swap and stuff yeah. like that, but I was like, nobody yeah. cares. <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares. And look, we, we've got extra stuff to talk about, so we're just going to yeah. jump into into that stuff. But We're just going to jump into the heart, Well, the civic heart. Oh, damn. Oh. Yeah, now the, now who's the king of segues? That's right, baby. That's I right. didn't have the camera on you, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my, uh, just, just my smooth, dulcet tones. <laughs> um, no, look, uh, just... Um, a follow-up from last week's episode, which actually only happened about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we left the plan build um, discussion. <laughs> and these two boys were blowing out so much and uh, in enjoying themselves with it. They're like, let's just make this a uh, company policy that you've got to add it That's to it. every list. I'm, I'm still on it now. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, it's been a whole week. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're still on the same. <laughs> it's been, been rolling. It's been incredibly successful across the team. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, it, it was a cool thing to bring to the um, yeah. table. And, yeah, as we said, we were going to look into um, – Getting someone on. It's only been 15 minutes yeah, since so since we said that. We so we're still working, it, working on yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but but trust us, we're on it. Yeah. Um, all right. No, you um, had a great segue, John. You can um, fire it off at us one more time. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the, well, what, how did I do it? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's you, right. You're going we're straight gonna, to the heart. We're going straight to the heart. <laughs> the civic heart. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Tell us a bit more about the civic heart. What so have you got for this us? This is the Glenorchy Cityscaped. Sub precinct master plan. So, jeez, oh, <laughs> civic heart sounded easy to yeah, say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, now, this is a something that's been in the works for many, many years, and I think it's a really exciting um, uh, release because it goes to show that a lot of those that are in council at the moment are actually looking at Glenorchy not for just their, you know, it's twelve months, five years, but it's really the next. What does the next thirty years of Glenorchy? What could it look like? So this master plan is to transform where the council building is now and the immediate surrounds of that um, city block into something just completely different, completely re reinvigorating that space and it's just something um, you know. 180 for what it is now. So that would transform the library, transform the council, it would bring in new services, shops, you name it. So then into one beautiful integrated hub that would actually be really enticing for people to use. Because at the moment, obviously, um, you know, it is a sign of its time and they really want to move that. They want to, you know, I think a lot of large part of it too, they can re, re-envision how people see the council as well. At the moment, it's just this big prominence um, building right in the, you know, showcase in the street. Sure, so sure. How could that be, you know, Designed differently, so it becomes more accessible. Doesn't need to be take up, doesn't need to take up as much foot space, you know. So it was footprint. Could the library be done differently? Um, so over the last, um, sorry to keep going, but you know, for a while now they've been um, having um, uh, think tanks with different uh, special interest groups, obviously businesses and individuals and those involved in around the council. Um, and then now here they've released their first draft of what it could actually potentially look like. Yeah, and it is impressive, mm. mighty impressive. Um, I guess being someone that's grown up in the city of Glenorchy for, well, like you said in your little amble there, 30 years' time, like what will Glenorchy look like? We've yeah. had 30 years living in Glenorchy. Like all three of us have yeah. been, um, yeah, members of the Glenorchy city um, for all this time. So we've seen, you know, kind of the skate park go in just over near where the offices were come and, and then that come and go and then that turn into the health um, hub and then recently the um, street, the 
Well, it's called the main road has been like redeveloped. It took maybe a year and a half, but yeah. Um, well, obviously they're planning for thirty years because the main road took them that long. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> <laughs> they know that this isn't a quick job. Oh man! <laughs> but it's amazing to see the the place we've grown up. Um, yeah, kind of develop and like we we're only discussing off mic before, kind of bringing that flannelette curtain, which I know you've. Talked about flannelette. Look, look at yeah, you yeah, right absolutely. now. Absolutely. Well, there's, um, this technique of the McGregor tartan too. Yeah, yeah, we've heard that. <laughs> we know. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> we could make a super cut of. This is actually. <laughs> this is yeah, did you know I'm from Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> um, Just don't get him talking about the tug of war again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, this looks awesome. This is really cool. So it's kind of, um, yeah, updating it and bringing, as you've described, the heart of Glenorchy to life and, um, yeah, really changing that precinct and giving it, um, yeah, a, a major facelift. Yeah, well, what, I think one of the things too that as at the first, it gives a bit of a background of, um, you know, how it evolved in terms of getting to this stage and, as the um, as the d- this design is that they tried to you know piece together a series of guiding principles that would sort of try and unify a vision on what they're trying to achieve. Yeah, sure. So I'll read them through quickly. Yep. Um, but uh, first and foremost, supporting and generating a strong economy, fostering a vibrant and activated place. So when they say activated. A space that people actually use, sure, you know, so um, in, in in a multitude of ways, uh, encouraging safe movement and transport access. So that was the idea to ensure that you know it, it's easy for you know modern for for you know uh, bicycles and the buses and the to support obviously the larger goal, you know, around the Hobart, which is to connect everything. No Northern Suburbs Rail in there. Nope. No. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. So, but I suppose that's the print the guiding principles. It, it, yes, let's let's bring that into the discussion because obviously. An activated space is going to connect over into the highway and through into the rail, so that was obviously there. Um, embedding sustainability into the precinct, which I'm sure you'd be passionate about, Pat, but I think that's, again, would in there it says best practice standards for sustainability will uh, undergird the building form. Now let's face it, it's obviously trying to make it as, as low impact, I suppose, and self-sustaining as possible. Looking at it, was that like giant um, greenery on the roof? Is that's that what it looks like to yeah, me. Yeah, I think so. I'm so, all about that. So I think one of the ideas was, <laughs> was, was to Touched actually have, hard. Yeah, I think that was one of the ideas of an activated space of actually on the rooftops you've got a communal garden. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that was one of the ideas throwing around. Um, championing accessibility. Uh, actually, Glenorchy, I think, is actually supposedly one of the best um, uh, councils for um, accessibility. You know, accessibility, wheelchairs, etc. So that's something they obviously want to ensure that, that they retain. Uh, greening the civic heart, so that's where the you know that roof yep. element comes into, um, making it actually a joyful place to be a part of, not rather just a concrete jungle. Celebrating the community. Um, in that instance, then it was actually to um, the, you can see they've got a you know a large space in front of the council, but it rarely gets used. And when it is, it's quite awkward. I'm, I remember being part of a um, the Glenorchy Task Force where we used to put on those concerts. Oh the man, time, I remember right? that. Um, yeah. And you know they they're they're always really well received, but it's still awkward you know, environment. So, you know, it'd almost be designed, you could have it almost a semi-amphitheatre, that kind of style. So it actually, it's purpose built for um, entertaining. Um, and then d- designing a di- dis- distinctive public realm. And again, that's that element where uh, with the public realm, it's like everyone can have a sense of ownership over it. So you're all, everyone's welcome. Everyone's welcome to contribute. Everyone's welcome to use it. And they, fr- from that then, you know, once those you know, ideas were set in place, that's when, you know, the designs and concepts started to roll out that, um, you know, people could see now. Yeah. I guess looking at some of these images here, it's giving me a real kind of Federation Square vibe in yeah. um, in Melbourne. Like, I guess if you're trying to envision what we're describing is, yeah, the community space and the civic heart, a lot of this stuff is looking kind of like, yeah, let's all, and I guess the activated side of life is like, let's all actually congregate in here yeah. and, um, yeah, use it as a, as a space that's vibrant and, and happening, mm. um, so yeah. Just to paint the picture in other people's minds is, yeah, it's looking a lot like that. And I think the idea of having that in um, the city of Glenorchy is is really cool. It's kind of yeah, like you say, take away that concrete jungle and that kind of blocky side of life, and it's just like yeah, we've put the Lego blocks together, and now we've thrown them away, and now we've got this yeah, awesome <laughs> new space that's um, yeah. Here well, for the people. It's it's incre- now they've got um, good visuals that the, you can access as well. It. it it actually just gets you excited if they could actually pull it off. Oh, yeah, a thousand percent. Mm. Like yeah. even like I'm looking here now, like a play space near um, the old church where the bus mall kind of yes. used to be. I was like, sweet, that works for me. I can bring um, Jack and Henry along. and They'll be 30-year-old men. But <laughs> oh, no, they can bring their kids. Yeah, I'll be the granddad. Yeah, they're the granddad, yeah, they're the granddad right. at this Yeah, good call, good call. <laughs> 
And that was um, and what they because that church that obviously has the heritage element, so they can't touch that at all. Um, so how can? But at the moment, it's just surrounded by some gates, and which is fair enough. Like it needs to be protected, but it doesn't get used either. So it's you know, could that also be integrated into the space a lot better? You know, so. Um, that, that all came into the design concepts, obviously, they've now been able to release. Because they actually had to go through, um, I think they had to go through multiple um, consultancy firms because obviously you need professionals to build this, but they needed the right people that actually would get on board and actually listen and, and actually do what the, the vision that they had in mind rather than just, well, you know, get, get stuffed, basically. <laughs> so um, is this something that you've been involved in some of the planning stuff? Like you're very spot- passionate about it, John. No, like I feel like I don't, whether it was Christy before or who's the current um, mayor of Glenorchy? Uh, oh, Beck. Um, just Beck like, Thomas. Beck Thomas, yeah. Yeah. Um, is this something you've you've spoken with them about? Like is this something you've... Um, well, they've, they've had, obviously, like I said, they've had interviews with, when, when they call special interest groups, all it is is about different businesses and community groups, et cetera. So they can get, um, you know, a voice for from a multi, multitude of different angles rather than having to ask 40,000 people what they think immediately. Yeah, sure. Otherwise it'd just be a nightmare. So um, yeah, I've been involved with these, um, you know, those think tanks uh, from the very first stage this con- the, this concept came into play. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, it's been really interesting. So I've obviously had my little bit, you know, my... T- two cents to add at the time and then chatting with other people would, you know, and then the, the, the diversity of views that there was in those rooms was amazing because I mean, in the end I've got no, my background is what being a you know passionate Glenorchy resident and then also real estate agent. Avid um, Scotsman. Avid Scotsman. Um, <laughs> did, uh, have you guys seen my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask yeah. you about that. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Um, and then they had, you know, those from, um, you know, those you know, architects there that just by chance, or you had even those that are, you know, running the community groups. You had, um, you know, interest from uh, Metro and like every all the businesses around the area. Yeah, so like key stakeholders key, from all around the space. Key and key yeah, you That's, you yeah. have been a key stakeholder in this. It's just mm. the way you've been discussing it. It's like there's definitely something like you've not that you've got an inside track, but you've you've been over this more than just looking over the the file. The yeah. file. But I think what what's most exciting about it that I want people to understand is just the people that behind it are so excited by it, and it's not uh, and it really hasn't been an ego trip. They've really wanted to ideas like we want Glenorchy to be amazing. How can we make that happen? Yep. Um, and that's sort of been the driving force behind it, which has been that's why I've been so excited to be a part of it because I've. I've I've been a part of the people who want to make it happen. You're like, these are good people. Yeah, yeah. They want the best for the. And mo- this will this will be a lot of them will be gone far before this ever gets realised as well. Yeah. So I guess um, like yeah, my then um, jumping to the next side of things is like to c- keep the real estate side of um, of the podcast going is mm. kind of you do a major development like this, it's going to encourage more people to want to come to the city of Glenorchy. So then you'd assume that that would be really good for. Um, homes in the area and and the growing kind of market Always. is that yeah yeah is that yeah. something that you would see like I guess even the idea of adding St Albie into Moona felt like it moved the um, flannelet curtain you know another kilometer down the road and then that mm. added like prices in um, Moona seemed to skyrocket once everyone was like oh Moona's actually a bloody nice suburb well and then if you go from oh well Moona yeah that's a nice suburb but have you been to the heart of Glenorchy yeah. That's a bloody nice suburb. And that was the thing when I was the, I was the stakeholder for from the real estate perspective was that there, were, there was no objection to this. Yeah. There was zero. Like there is no – all that is is net benefit. Making the city better yeah. can't negatively affect um, not yeah, in, real estate. Not in any way, shape or form. Like there was better services, better transport, better entertainment, um, you know, better – Restaurants, everything. Like, just look, you can't object to that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so it's sort of, um, you know, the hard discussion will be obviously some people are going to hate it, some people are going to love it, a lot of people will be indifferent. Um, and also, too, the challenge between the stakeholders was, well, um, they're representing different bodies. Like, well, you know, the council's still got to be looked after, the library's still got to be looked after, the, all the services have got to be looked after. That, um, And how can that all um, – how can all these – can you know, oh, it's, yeah, we'll just call it conflicting views in some sense yep. um, who need their – I need this. I need this. How can they bring this? How can they bring all those together that everyone can get, can rally behind? Um, and they're really starting to get really close to that, which is what this <laughs> first draft obviously is now ready for public view and commentary. Um, I think by the time this will get released, though, eh? like I think the um, the scope for feedback might close. But um, yeah, I think unfortunately we probably should have covered on this um, a little bit earlier, and we yeah. would have been able to um, yeah 
just let people know that it was still up for discussion and you could have your say. But mm. unfortunately, I think that ended maybe two weeks ago. Um, but, sorry, guys. But with that, I mean, but look at it anyway. So I think the if you know, hopefully they can really you know get this vision um, off the ground because I think the the net pipeline it said for you know the Gnorky Future Investments is like one point nine billion or something that it said in the um, in the uh, the intro. Um, so there's it's not just this, but there's so much more. So there's huge you know huge plans and hopes for what could be invested. It's funny. I'm just looking at another bit here, which I wouldn't have even flagged previously. But on the episode that we spoke about um, the medium density building of the um, the houses being on top of buildings along the main mm. corridor. I'm halfway through, I kind of brought up the idea of like, oh, what about parking? Like I hadn't thought about this. Mm. It's thought about in this document. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're talking one. about how there's all this underground huge parking one. that they're planning on um, putting in place. So that would definitely resolve the issue that I had with that episode. So <laughs> well, and that thank was, you. That, that was one team. of the first things that you know, discovered is that there's so much open just car space in, at the moment. And that's a lot of valuable real estate that you can build on top of. Yeah. Um, so that was um, in some part to just, well, let's just get something on there that we can use as opposed to just taking up car spaces. However, yes, that one with those being displaced, well, they need a spot for them. Um, so that was obviously a big challenge that they've had to overcome as well. I'm getting further into it. Sorry, I didn't listen mm. to what you said because I was scrolling through the <laughs> um, right. it's, it through was, the document here. I was trying to find <laughs> the next talking point, but I found. Did you ever go to the High Line in um, New York City? Yeah, yeah. I've just found that here. They're kind of using that as an example to yeah. say, you know, like this High Line is, is a great use of space. Yeah, mm. so like an old abandoned train line for people that don't know that has been transformed into a public open garden area. Oh, really? So it's That's this cool. big piece of train track that was, you know. So an elevated train up above, mm. kind of, you know, just, you see Spider-Man swinging through it in the yep. city. Yeah, yep. so, so it used to be just this nothingness mm. and then they've turned it in this big urban garden and it's got like basketball courts and meeting places to where you can eat and like oh, just chill and it's like this almost like a mm. second central park in a way. Yeah, that just spans across concrete. this yeah. long and you can go from like Chelsea all the way up to the top of the um, island. It's really, really no cool. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, looking through these examples here, it's like – well, even you were talking before the new uni oh, development yeah. bit, Pat. You were saying how you and Abby will oh, often walk through. Yeah, I just love the new uni accommodation in the centre of the city and how they have made – the big like accommodation area on the ground floor connect to the city and there's mm. these little parkland area in there that you can sit and relax and like even though obviously it was for the purpose of uni students it's open to the public anyone going oh there. yeah yeah because they've got a couple of basketball courts there. yeah exactly they people do in there all the time yeah it's just mm. such a cool space in the center of the city where you can sort of escape the city and i guess and that's that, what this feels like to a degree yeah it's that mm. not using um what we've got in the nature of the area to kind of i guess like create these little arterial kind of passageways that aren't you know like oh this is like a corridor that you have to go down it's like oh no you can use this space and go through the buildings and come through but it's not kind of yeah invasive Mm. and yeah and then like it's just such a clever use of space here like they're not actually removing the old council chambers they're just repurposing it with a more modern look Yeah. yeah Like they've done that to a degree with the Dillon Entertainment Centre that they've recently redone or My State Arena or whatever it's called now. Like mm. you look at that from the outside and it looks like this brand new state of the art like complex. Well, I've said I've said numerous times like everyone was going in and saying like, oh, they've done such a good job. It's so cool in there now. I'm like, that doesn't look like it's changed that much. Like, no, they put a new same. cafe out the front of yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> like, a big entrance way. Like, it can't be that different. And then you roll into there and you're just like, wow, this is really cool. They have yeah. like they've kind of brought it into the 21st century. So, yeah, so yeah, bringing Glenorchy into the 21st century. It's so cool when you mm. can take old original spaces and repurpose them better. Absolutely. And give them a fresh look. Because yep. A, that saves on your development costs mm-hmm. of the project, mm-hmm. saves on wastage, like rather than demolishing a full building if you can repurpose part of that building. Mm-hmm. Like there's just so much good that could come out of like what they've done here and how they've sort of put this plan together. It's really clever. Oh, it's hundred percent. The and the consultants were fantastic. And yeah. the um but bringing all those um you know different differing views into this is uh, unbelievable. And like it references here like the current square meter rate of like square meters mm-hmm. of how much building is there currently versus what it'll be when it'll finish and just to know that you can create that much additional space in the same area oh yeah, yeah as well yeah. as create these public spaces where people like there's a basketball court in the middle of this thing yeah. according to the plan yeah like, yeah yeah like it's just such a better use of the space by the look of it because well, an idea behind that was to have this you know little community center where if you are bringing your kids into the center hub of it you can feel safe um, and connected without having to worry, you know. So, um, and you know, the idea too is very simply in the council builders. Why do they have to be? On, why do they have to be working on the bottom floor? 
well, if, if everyone was, you know, it's an administrative organisation, so raise it up a level and boom, you've got an entire floor that the public can access again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's, um, you know, there's there's oh, so many little smart well, talking to it. Like we're talking five stories here on some of the buildings. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's big yeah. for Glenorchy. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I don't know <laughs> if you're allowed to build, to build five stories in Tasmania, are you? But generally, as soon as you get a little high, everyone <laughs> like, gets panicked. We've been saying for ages that Glenorchy and Claremont, or not Claremont, Glenorchy and Bella Reeve and these outer suburbs need to allow for you go. higher buildings. Yep. And like start with this project, get a five-story building in the centre of the city, then you can then leverage to other opportunities from there. Absolutely, absolutely. So, that's very cool. Yeah, look, I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, and talking from the real estate side of things, like mm. obviously just speculating as the guy on the other side of the desk, but yeah, it cannot be bad for it was, um, it was, yeah. prices in the city. Obviously that's something that they've discussed with you, um, John, and I'm sure other agents and, and people. But yeah, any any addition to the city of Glenorchy or any area, I can't see as a bad thing for... No, um, no, it, was, it was just net positive all the way around. So homeowners in Glenorchy, um, yeah, have a look at this and, and if you support it, get behind it. And mm. obviously, we yeah, we missed the deadline for um, discussing. Oh, Pat's just found something new that he hadn't read about previously. <laughs> what have you found? So right? didn't research very well for this episode. Oh. <laughs> Got an example here of a church in Santa Barbara that's been turned into a skate park inside. Oh, you're oh, kidding. Oh, no way. <laughs> it looks freaking cool. Oh, that's just straight out of um, Tony, Tony Hawk. Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Imagine oh, that little church down there into an internal skate park. Yeah, I'm on board. Sign me up. All right. Skate park for everyone. I was just doing, I didn't have like a, a skateboarding like trick that sort of related to churches. I'm sure there has to be one. Like, you know, yeah, the Christ Air. Or something. Christ Air. There you yeah, go. there you go. There. Sweet. Boom. Thanks, sir. That's what um, many years of Tony Hawk <laughs> yeah. all the way That's through it. will do for you. So I couldn't remember. <laughs> I, was, I was so disappointed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All good. All right, boys. Look, it's um, it's Easter um, this week. So, yeah, shout out to everybody that um, had a good Easter and shout out to all our Probably Pod listeners. I'm going to wrap it up there. Mm. Um, yeah, interesting stuff there. I think we'll try and pop some um, yeah more information about that together and people can read about it yeah. at our 414.com real estate uh, website. And, yeah, shout out to everyone out there. It's always fun to do a back-to-back. It always gets a little bit silly at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See you. See you. <laughs> yeah, I reckon try and do Bike a track. You have been listening to The Property Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek then use their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of this information without first seeking qualified and professional advice.